All right, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the editor that I have been using for a few months. I honestly think it's one of the best editors you can use with your Linux system as far as just like using it to be able to configure things. I know, you know, some people like, you know, Vim or Nano, but I found that this editor makes it easy simplistic and um, a nice experience um, to edit your config and get things set up the way you want on your uh, Linux system. And you can use the help of AI embedded into it as well if that's something you're interested. Um, so this video is actually sponsored, but all the thoughts and the comments that I'm making today are my own and they are not influenced by it at all. So today I want to go over the actual editor, which is the Z editor. I did a previous video on this a while ago. I have been using this for a while now. I wanted to show exactly why I really like this editor specifically for editing my configuration on Linux and making my you know configuration better and be able to edit and theming and all the all those good things. Uh, so here is the uh, Z editor. You can select what folder um, you want to be in. I can open a new folder and select what I want. So if I want to open my uh, Black Dawn OS uh, folder here, I can do so like that. And then as you can see the full, it shows the full directory for the Black Dawn OS. So if I come back here to my Neary config, which was the one that I'm on now, um, you can see I have everything here. It does have the option to add different languages and config. So if you go into extensions, the KDL language is here. So I can just type in KDL and get that uh, installed um, onto my system. It also has the Nix option as well. So if you're you know, editing your Nix config, you can have highlight and syntax there as well. You also can add NCP servers. They have a context uh, NCP servers, which is a really good one because you can get different Hyperland. So it like has all the updated like Hyperland, Neary, and all the different options for this NCP server. For instance, with my development stuff, I do use Superbase. So they have a Superbase NCP server as well. So you can add those very easily from here and install them. And there's an easy configuration option to get them installed. So actually, if I go to the Superbase one, just to show you what happens. So if I click on configure, it pops up this little window. So I don't have to create this file and edit it and change everything that I need to. They just make it really simple. I just have to add my token in here and then hit configure server. And then it's done. There's really no other configuration, so they make it really easy to add these things into the actual configuration here. Um, and then they have a bunch of themes built in that you can go to. So if I look at themes here, they have a bunch. I have the Capuchin Mocha one installed right now, but they have the Blur, they have they have Night Fox, they have the Tokyo one. They, so they pretty much have all of them. And actually, if you go into if you go into Z themes here. They literally have a bunch. If it's not installed, you can actually install different themes here, which is, you know, obviously if you're a Linux enthusiast like myself, you love theming your desktop and making everything cohesive. You know, it speaks to us, speaks to us right there. So you can get whatever theme you have, Rose Pine, whatever theme you're going with, it, it pretty much has it available in there. The thing that I really like about it, and you know, not everybody is big on AI and stuff like that, but I like to use it to help me configure things or if I'm getting syntax wrong, or if I just need help with something or not being able to find a file, because configuring your Linux desktop does take a lot and you got to know exactly where everything is. But it's really easy um, to be able to get AI to help you out with that. The way I've been doing it, I've been using Claude code, but there's so many options that are really easy to set up. If I go into settings, you can use external agents. They have Claude code, Codex, and Gemini. You can add all of those super easily. As you can see, it has the MCP server that I just added, the Superbase one. They do have their own as well. So if you sign in through ZAI, you can sign up and get the ZAI features as well, which have a few extra ones where you can go into a super mode. You can do some really complex and high thought processed configuration things as well. It gives you the option to do that with the, the Z option, which I do like. I did try it, you know, for about a month. I might try it again, but it, it does work really well. But the nice thing is that you can actually add pretty much any LMM provider that you want. You can add new ones or use the ones they already have configured. I do have the GitHub Copilot chat authorized in here. So you can actually use that down here. You can use this GitHub Copilot chat either as your edit predictions or you can use the Z ones. Those are completely free. If you sign in through a Z account, you can get those completely free through the Z option for unlimited 
completions, which is really nice. And then you can do the Claude one here, but I actually did Claude code with my subscription. So I have a subscription to Claude code already. So I get the unlimited option there and it's just built into the Claude code option. So that's the one that you see here. I have the new thread for Claude. I wanna show real quick kind of how powerful it is to use it within your configuration. For instance, I have created all of these different web apps here for various things that I like to have on my system. I have created binds for down here in my configuration. So you can see all of the binds here. I actually took this configuration from the one that I had on my NixOS configuration because I'm on the Arch one right now, which is through Endeavor OS. All of these have the wrong desktop names here. So the actual ID is incorrect. So it's not going to launch those. So if I do control shift C to open the Claude AI, it's not going to do anything because it's the wrong description. So instead of me having to go through and find all the desktop names and redo all of these one by one, I can actually just go over here and ask the AI to do it. So I can say, I added these web apps and I want them to open with my eBinds that I already set. I need to update the IDs to match the ones on my system. And then what I'll probably do is just copy the ones here and what's nice is it'll tell you exactly what it's going to do. It'll show you the files that it is opening and viewing, and you have to allow or always allow. I always just do allow because you want to be in complete control of what's happening on your system. So if you don't want it to do something, you don't have to allow. You can either reject it or interrupt it by adding a new message. I can allow it, and it's going to find all of the desktop applications. So it found all the web apps, desktop files. Here and it's getting the, the web app IDs, which it found. And I can actually see the web app IDs. It's showing all of them here. And so now I can actually correct the web app IDs over here. As you can see, it's editing my configuration.kdl. Um, you can see it in real time over here that it has updated those. And you can keep or reject any edit that it ever did. So you're not stuck with whatever it, it, it wanted. And if you do keep all over here, it's going to keep everything that it just configured. So I can go ahead and do keep all. As you can see, the IDs have updated and changed. So now if I close all of those out, I can actually go ahead and let's say we want to launch the Claude web app one. So I can do mod shift C and now it works. So yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys exactly how, you know, everything works within here and how I have everything, you know, configured and set up to be able to edit and make changes to my, you know, Linux configuration, you know, very easily. And I just love the UI of the Z editor. It's not all in your face and have a bunch of, you know, things. It's very clean and very easy to, you know, use and configure. If you want to use the AI tools, you can, which those are very, as you see, you know, very easy to, to add and use as well. But if you don't want them, you can always, you know, have, have them hidden off to the side and not use them and just use the editor, you know, directly as it is. So it's a great lightweight and, you know, feature packed editor that you can use. So yeah, if you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than willing to help you out, but that's it for today. If you guys have enjoyed my content, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.